Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Sam I. B. DeGangie reporting for The Media Speaks. I must say, I have gotten some of the best comments lately, particularly from Infowars.com. Please keep leaving your comments. Um, you, the easiest way to do it, Facebook.com slash The Correct Views. You see, I've been getting comments of people saying, Your hair, you need to cut your hair. Or, I don't like tattoos. I think they look trashy. Nobody at all can touch the facts that are brought to you on this show. I don't like the way you talk. I don't like the way you word stuff. You know what? I don't care if you like me. Here's what I want you to do. I want everybody to listen. I'm going to call my haters out. I want everyone listening to this. To call me out any way you want. My hair, my tattoos, you can call me gay. I'm not, I have nothing against gay people. I'm not, call me gay. Bring it. I want you to tell me where I'm wrong. I don't care if you like me. I'm really not all that likable. But I promise to tell you the truth. You've got my word on it. Friends, uh, SanFrancisco.CBSLocal.com. Falling gas tax revenue has California lawmakers considering mileage tax plan. Now, how many of you know what I'm about to say here? They have been selling you this idea. If you, if you get a, if you get a, a hybrid car, do you know how much money you can save on gas, low def listeners? Hi, deaf listeners. Do you know how much money you can save on gas if you just get these? <gasps> Do you know how much good you'll be doing the planet? Well, you'll be saving money and you'll be doing the planet so much good, even though we all know, according to ClimateGate.com, according to Lord Moncton, uh, type in man-made global warming is a lie. You'll find 9 million pages that prove it. It is. It's a lie. But if you bought into it, you were going to save money, right? If you got a smaller car, we're going to save money, right? Let's remember that Jello Biafra of the Dead Kennedys, when he said California Uber Alice, look it up, he was perfectly right about Jerry Brown, save the fact that he didn't run for president. With an increase in electric and hybrid vehicles along with better fuel-efficient vehicles, Charging, changing Bay Area drivers' habit are imposing a serious problem for state coffers. In other words, they did what you asked them to do. As motorists use less and less gas, gas tax revenues to pay for state highways, roads, and bridges shrink. Meanwhile, as gas prices fall, so does the sales tax generated by fuel sales in California. Among the taxes collected on fuel is a 2.25 sales tax on gasoline and a 9.76% tax on diesel. Please stay with me. It goes on. Some state lawmakers feel a mileage tax is the best solution. To pay for the shortfall, California officials are considering a plan that would replace California's gas tax with a fee for each mile that motorists drive. Drivers who log in the most miles will end up paying the most no matter how fuel efficient the car is. Let me put that in layman's terms. You were spending a lot of money on gas and you wanted to help the environment because that's what the state of California told you to do. That's what the United Nations told you to do. Well, guess what? You pay taxes on your gas, and now they're going to charge you for how far you go. Because you buying that fuel-efficient car meant that you weren't using as much fuel. Therefore, you're not buying as much fuel and paying the taxes that are in the fuel. So because you, Mr. Good Liberal, did what they asked you to do, you're going to get taxed because they're losing money because they're because you're doing what they ask you to do this is where i can appeal to the greens 
and I can appeal to the Democrats. I'm a libertarian. I've got nothing to hide. I'm not here to win you over. Do you understand that? You. You did what they asked you to do. Your green leader, not my green leader, I didn't vote for him. Your green leader did this to you. And now they're going to find another way to get the money out of you after you listen to what they told you to do. It says, to pay for the shortfall, California officials are considering a plan that would replace California's gas tax with a fee for each mile motorist drive. Drivers who log the most miles <clears throat> will pay the most money. I'm not making it up, friends. It's right there. Want to call me a conspiracy theorist? Want to say I'm making it up? Okay, you can say I'm making it up, but this is CBS that I'm quoting. We're going to move on. And now as my green listeners realize, oh my God, I hate this long-haired guy with the tattoos. But you know what? He's right. Guess what? We don't have to like each other. The facts are what they are. Economist world leaders will exploit Charlie Hebdo to eliminate encryption. In other words, because people in France got shot, you will lose your right to not have the government reading your emails. That's what this means. This is by Paul Joseph Watson at Infowars.com, uh, or as we like to say at the Media Speaks, it's by PJ Dub. Economist Martin Armstrong warns that the twin attacks in France will be used by world leaders to push for restrictions on internet privacy and a total elimination of encrypted communications. How do you fight this? I can tell you how to fight this if you'll just listen to me. We need the best encryption minds to come out with encryption platforms by the tons. And unfortunately, we need you to do it free because people like me don't have the money to pay for it. But if you do that, we will download it. We will promote it. We won't be able to give you any money, but you'll be able to know that you help the cause of liberty by sending out these encryption programs that have not yet been hacked by the government. Um, how do I know this works? Because I'm not making anything to do this show, but I'm doing it for liberty. So I need you programmers to do the same thing I'm doing. Armstrong, who correctly predicted in 1987 Black the Monday, the Black Monday crash, as well as the 1998 Russian financial collapse, which virtually nobody predicted, uh, he writes that they are using this latest event precisely as they used 911 to strip us of our rights. Let's remember that Iraq was, according to George W. Bush, going to not only pay for their liberation from their oil, which never happened, but uh, the, the Patriot Act was supposed to be temporary. You know what? I'm not wrong on much. I was wrong on that. I supported it, and I will never be able to apologize to you, the listener, enough for what I supported. I'm going to be dead honest. I was way wrong there. I wish I hadn't trusted him to repeal it. It was a mistake, which you don't find very often here, but I wasn't running the correct views yet, so my show is intact. David Cameron, PM, uh, would be Prime Minister for you Kesha fans of Britain, wants to block WhatsApp and Snapshot if he wins the next election as part of his plans on new surveillance. Britain will lead the charge to outlaw encryption altogether when Britain has been walking hand-in-hand -hand with the NSA. They are using this latest event precisely as they use 911. So basically what we have here is them exploiting the Islamist fascist bastards and using it to take away the rights from all of the rest of us. You can read the whole article. I'm not going to bore you to tears, but here's the nuts and bolts of it. We need the best and the brightest in terms of encryption, particularly non-government affiliated encryption experts, to freely give your work out so that we can keep the government out of our emails. You're not going to make any money at all. You're going to lose money and you're going to lose time. I'm not going to give you any money, but I'm going to use your platform. You know what? I'm not making any money. Use my show. 
to get other people to make encryption platforms. Because if we who care about liberty do not band together, we're all screwed, okay? Uh, PrisonPlanet.com, a uh, legal pot turns one in Colorado. So I'm going to report to you all the deaths that have happened as a result of this. Except for the fact that there aren't very many. Except for people that have never used weed and ate too many cookies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to report to you all the people that died this year of cancer because of Colorado. Except for the fact that well, nobody did. So I'll have to just give you the truth. In a nutshell... Pot's not hurting anybody at all. The Denver Business Journal recently published a retrospective containing several articles, and there's a link to it, reviewing the experience. The general conclusion is that it has been a success, not the tragedy some had predicted or claimed. The remarkable thing is that the report claims the biggest remaining problem for the industry is caused by the Federal Reserve. Some of the big concerns prior to legalization have turned out to be trivial or failed to materialize at all. Expectations of overdose, death, oh, we're going to OD on weed, delinquency and crime did not materialize to the extent that the newspaper barely reported on these issues. Crime in Denver actually, come on, you know what I'm going to say, it declined in early reports. Earlier this year, I examined the experience in Colorado and found that most reports were favorable to legalization. For example, the Business Insider reported that legalizing weed in Colorado was a huge success, although they did report a downside as well. Jacob Salome reported that such things as underage consumption, do people drink underage and they shouldn't? It's legal. Let's face it, it happens. Potheads, let's be real. Now we have underage people using weed. I concede, yes, that happened. Just like with alcohol, that is legal. But yes, it happened. And traffic fatalities declined, but not significantly with an already down declining trend. So basically... They legalized weed and traffic rates fell, but not because of it, simply along with it. It was associative, not causative. We're being real, we're staying with the facts. There was one early report that strongly called into question the legalization of weed in Colorado. It was put by an official, it says, outfit from the Rocky Mountain High Intensity Drug Trafficking Area Program. <clears throat> it turns out that the program is part of the White House Office of Drug Policy. But the fact is not advertised in the report. So basically the only people that have anything bad to say about it are the people that didn't want it to happen to begin with. The point is, it has been a win. It has been a tax win. Accidents have not gone up the way that they said it would. The only people that OD did not really die. They simply ate too much of marijuana in a cookie and got a little bit too high and maybe, you know, fell off a bridge. I don't know. I'm not going to bore you reading exactly what it was, but you get the point. It has not harmed anybody. It has not caused any cancers. We have a few younger people that, let's face it, they were probably already smoking it in most instances. They got it legally quotations here for those of you on podcast they got it they got legal weed and therefore they're counting it as a problem what is weed hurt weed has hurt absolutely nothing friends i'm gonna zip through this one as well <clears throat> this is uh not eating this green superfood you are crazy what is this green superfood that is reported here by mike barrett avocados now friends I'm not sponsored by anybody in the avocado industry, to be dead honest. I don't even really know what the hell an avocado tastes like. I know what it tastes like in guacamole sauce. And while I like it, I don't love it. So you and I are going to do this together. I'm not a fan of the avocado, but I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. The only person I know that eats less avocados is me, is Christelle, because Christelle won't ever try anything new. Me... They're okay. 
but I'm going to try to find a way to eat them. I'm going to zip through this. Let me tell you why. One, avocados help with weight loss. Again, I'm not making any money telling you this, so hear me out. Avocados can actually help stave off hunger. One 2013 study published in the Nutritional Journal found that overweight adults who ate one half of an avocado at lunch had a 40% decrease in the desire to eat again over the next three hours. So it looks like if you can do an half an avocado every three or four hours, it'll make you feel like you're full when you're not. And let's face it, who wants to spend a lot of money on weight loss pills when we can take our pudgy asses to the store and get an avocado? Two, avocados help control blood pressure. Uh, they contain lots of blood pressure combating potassium, an average of 975 milligrams. And uh, that's important for the kidneys, blood pressure, and muscle health. For those of you that may or may not like bananas, uh, this is another way to do it without those. Me, I love bananas, but some of you don't. And there's only five, so stay with me. Avocados boost brain, brain performance. We can all use that since we live in the dumbest nation in history. Interestingly, some research has found that high blood pressure increases the risk of cognitive, cognitive decline. It says avocados lower blood pressure and reduce cholesterol, promoting healthy blood flow. So if your blood pressure isn't real high, you might want to try this instead of some of Big Pharma. Again, I'm not a doctor, but I'm giving you the news that's in front of me. Four, avocados improve heart health. Uh, there's a research finding avocado eaters to be healthier than those who don't eat avocados. And notice that those who eat them have a 50% lower risk of uh, metabolic syndrome, and that increases heart disease. So let's up them. And again, that should be a pretty easy study to prove, since I don't know a single person who loves avocados. That includes me. Now, last one, five. Avocados are one of the clean 15. And listen to this. For those of you that like to eat organic but cannot afford to do so and still have a life like I do, if you're concerned about pesticide exposure, and you should be, avocados are one of the cleanest of all produce. Their tough exterior helps protect them from contamination, so if you cannot afford to buy all organic, this is one piece of produce that you can purchase in the conventional form. In other words, it's not heavily GMO'd. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, asking you to listen to the last two stories I have before you check out. And also remembering uh, to remind you to look out the work of Mike McLaughlin. You can find him uh, at uh, Facebook.com. Mike McLaughlin writes some of the best fiction that you'll ever read. And make sure you let him know that you heard about it from the correct views. I also want to give a shout out real quick to Neopa Radio, who's bringing you our next story from Boston City. Um, Neopa Radio is about to... Um, syndicate the show so we're going to be doing 58 minute 55 minute shows here real soon shout out to neopa friends the show is growing this is from timothy geigner at tech dirt uh, brought to you by neopa radio boston city employees barred from halting on Olymp hating excuse me on olympics mayor says your free speech is intact in other words the mayor has told you that you can't say certain things, and you not being able to say those things is, in fact, protecting your free speech. The Olympics, on every other year experiment in curtailing the rights of its hosts while draining those hosts of much money as possible, which is true, it's apparently gotten so bad that essentially nobody has a link to it, actually wants to host the Olympic Games at all. Those still relentlessly putting in bids to bring on this multi-nation quagmire of garbage you probably don't care at all that much of the IOC and its smaller subparts are money-grubbing, number-trademarking, viewer-hating megalomaniacs who quite possibly lack what we refer to as souls and may or may not be fully manufactured Hitler clones, a tongue-in-cheek. But if you do care about those things, they better say so, according to what is apparently Boilergate illegal language in Boston's agreement, USOC. Again, for links and proof, please see the article. They are listed there. Nobody who lives in Boston actually wants the city to win its bid for the 2024 Olympic Games. 
And yet, in a joinder agreement between the city and the U.S. Olympic Committee, Mayor Marty Walsh has signed a contract that forbids employees from speaking negatively about the bid. The IOC or the Olympic Games is a great day for free speech in the cradle of liberty. The article says Boston, the home of the Boston Massacre and the Tea Party Revolt, the city from whence the USS Constitution launched, the home of both President John Adams has decided to suspend their employees' free speech rights in favor of a corporate sporting event packed with more authoritarian BS than your average Middle Eastern dictatorship. Let that sink in for a moment. Or, if you are like it says Boston's Mayor Marty Walsh, just dust that crap off your shoulder because it's no big deal, yo. Mayor Walsh is looking to limit the free speech of its employees and as residents of Boston, he fully supports and as residents and the community process, excuse me, this was standard boilerplate language for the joinder agreement which the USOC and that all applicant cities have historically signed. The mayor looks forward to the first citywide community meeting that will be held next week. The mayor has also claimed that there would absolutely be no punishment for city workers who decided to express their feelings on the Olympics being a big bucket money dog crap censored. But contracts are contracts, so they may or may not be inclined to test Walsh honesty on the point. So I'll do it for them. The Olympics sucks. Just read the Boston accent. I couldn't agree more if I had a gun to my head and was proven to do so. And friends, that brings us to the dum dee dum dee dum dee of the day. Oklahoma lawmaker proposes a Hoodie ban. <sighs> Proposed law would also prevent protesters from wearing the golf Guy Fox masks. Again, mass disobedience is at the end of the day the answer to this. This is from Kit Daniels. An Oklahoma state senator wants to ban people from wearing hoodies or even masks in public which, if enacted, would no doubt have a chilling effect on free speech, especially at protests. Senator Don Barrington recently introduced Senate Bill 13, which prohibits people from intentionally concealing their identities in a public place by means of a rope mask or other disguise. So now, you are obligated, when you go in public, to not wear a mask. That is ridiculous. What what would I support? If 50 people have wear a mask day, put it on my comment line. If 50 of you do it, I'll wear a mask. And within a, I don't know, Christelle, does 50 miles sound fair? Pretty fair. Within a 50 mile radius, I will do it. If it's banned, I'll still do it. I will come to your event if you can get 50 people to do this, whether the government likes it or not. I will be there within a 50-mile radius on any Friday or Saturday. Anytime you plan it, give me at least two weeks' notice. Barrington is referring to an existing state law which bans criminals from wearing hoodies or masks in the commission of a crime. But this bill would completely ban wearing hoodies or masks in public. Therefore, this is not something that has always existed. That is a lie. You are not allowed to wear a mask while holding somebody up. So, Christelle, within a 50-mile radius, I promise not to hold anybody up with a gun while wearing a mask. Does that sound fair? Pretty fair, yeah. Good. Uh, one of the numerous states Barrington is referring to is Florida, where it's illegal to wear a mask, hood, or other device on public way. Florida police used the law, which was enacted in the 1920s, to combat the Ku Klux Klan. To bust one of their own in 2013, a cop was arrested for wearing a golf Guy Fa Fox mask at a protest. So basically, this is why we are libertarian. And let me pause here for a minute. If I was to tell you that I'm against 
the law to ban wearing a mask, you would say, that makes sense to me. But let's go in our time machine and go back to the 1920s. People with very good intentions said that you're not allowed to wear a mask in public. By doing so, they eliminated the Ku Klux Klan from hurting black people. Somebody very close to me, somebody who I am banking on a very large part of my future and who I call a friend is a black man. Why won't I name him? Because I'm not like that. We don't do race here and I don't use my friends that way. But suffice it to say, he's a very important person in my life. It was done to protect his, what would be grandparents, great-grandparents probably. Okay, great. But when you let the government tell you what you're allowed to do, then it affects things that happen in the future. Now, this wonderful black person that I'm telling you about cannot wear a Guy Fox mask and march with me because laws that were made to protect his grandmother from having a cross burn in her yard is now being used against what might be his rights to free speech. Do you see now why we keep government out of our freaking business. Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGange signing off, reminding you to go to TheMediaSpeaks.com, look up the work of Kyle Court, D. Like, and myself. Also, let me ask you a favor. Do me a huge favor and donate to the show. Why? Because when you do, I can do more shows. I'm trying to get about, like, I don't know, 25 grand raised. I can throw it out there like that. Because if I do, if I can get like 25 grand raised, I'll quit my job and do this five days a week for you. I'll do Tuesday through Saturday or Monday through Friday. I like Tuesday through Saturday because nobody does live shows on Saturday. Can't do Sunday. That's when my band has me. Thank you for listening, friends. Good night. God bless. And please share this show.